got some good interviews, man. You got some classic shit. What up, y'all? This is Robert Glasper. This is Terrace Martin. It's Terrace Martin. <laughs> and you're watching Hard Knock TV with the homie Nick. Cause we don't give a shit and we'll bust your lip and don't even trip on Nick. And we stay lit and that's it. We out. Smoke weed every day. I said that was it. We out. The snap and everything. Smoke weed every day. Smoke weed every day. Mm -hmm. We actually walked in here. Your man was burning some uh, Palo Santo. Like how much of just the vibe of the room, the spirit, like what you walk in, like how much of that plays into the music that you make? A lot for me. I'm a, I'm a vibe whore. Uh, <laughs> 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 even at my shows, the vibe got to be right. People get mad sometimes because I don't like lights. Robert won't even let you come on stage at 1045 <laughs> if it don't look right. But you, the contract, he'll be like, no, no, we're going to 5, we're going to 1053. <laughs> the vibe, the vibe, the vibe. The vibe. <laughs> Everything's a vibe, man. I don't like people walking around, coming in, you know, like, oh, everybody there, I want you to experience it. But in the studio, yeah, I'm all about vibe. I, lo I love candles, like T's same way, you know. Candles, the lights gotta be right. If I'm about to play something on the piano, you know, I have to, I gotta tell them, you know, dim the lights, depending on the vibe, what I'm trying to portray. You know what I'm saying? And y'all try to get as close to that actual thing as possible in the studio. You know, I, I have liquor in the studio, I drink. What kind of liquor do you have? Vodka. <laughs> oh, and Johnny Walker. Come on now. Um, <laughs> I, just, I just did some Johnny Walker uh, things for them. They're awesome liquor. Checks. Um, but what kind of liquor do you have in the studio now? Johnny Walker Black. <laughs> um, it depends. There's two different kinds of records for me. Okay, There's a jazz way of making a record, and then there's the other way of making a record. So when I'm making more of a jazz thing, you know, I try to put myself in the vibe of when I play jazz. When I play jazz, it's probably late at night, and I'm probably tipsy, or drinking, having a good time with my friends, that's the vibe I'm in when I'm playing jazz. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I try to bring to the studio, that same exact vibe. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times when you go in the studio, a lot of musicians, they do the total opposite of what they've been trained to do their whole life. And then when you get to the studio, when you're supposed to make the thing that's going to be around forever to represent you, you all of a sudden change it up and you're playing at 9 in the morning. And shit, you know, 10 in the morning you're recording. Because you got to, you know... You want to start early so you can have all record, that time. I record 10 in the morning. But it depends on what you're recording. It, 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 it depends on the record. You're right, my bad. The jazz record or the other record. If it's the other record, it's different. Yeah. You know what I mean? But the jazz record, your body got to feel right to play jazz. We don't play jazz in the morning. Mm -mm. I don't play jazz in the morning, you know, unless you got some random corporate gig or something that, you know, nobody's listening to anyway, you know. But, yeah, so I try not to start recording, you know, till a little bit later in the day. Cause that's when my body feels that way. You know what I mean? That's just me. I would like to do it. Obviously, when you know when you're first coming up, you don't have a lot of money. You need to start and do it early and finish it, and do the, you need 12 hours. You know. But, so yeah, vibe is very important to get that the vibe across to other people. Because think about it, your music's doing something for somebody else. You know what I mean? So you have to make sure it's cool on this side before you put it on that side. Come on now, cool with this. It's like a pancake. You know, you can't only have one side done. <laughs> So many bars. bars. <laughs> Pancake music. Both sides done. Yo, y'all need to show Breakfast you. music, my G. Notes is the syrup, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Keep going with it, you know. <laughs> See, what about you? With the vibe? The vibe spirit, the inspiration. What, how do you get into that zone? I've done records in all different vibes. Like, I remember growing up with Snoop. 17, 19, 19, it would be a room, I would, it would be me doing a beat, Fred Wreck right there, Battle Cat, Jelly Roll, and like uh, six or seven pimps, maybe like a hundred hoes, you know what I'm saying? Maybe like six or seven gangsters on the run, maybe four or five, I mean, this is all one little ass room. So talking loud, why Snoop playing a video game, and then uh, the football games on this TV, then he has a special rich people TV, so the basketball season might be rushed just for him. I mean, just all that's going on while you have a beat and you gotta say, I gotta make it to the, I gotta try to make this album, so it, I can't even worry about the vibe. So in my case, I've been kind of, now I have the luxury where it's all about vibe, but I've been trained 
to where the vibe has to be whatever I just imagine in my head. Because I've always had to do beats rather than my little ass apartment, my dorm before then at my mama house. So it's like I've always had to imagine me at a young age in these rooms now to where now we may go lease an apartment for like mm -hmm. three months and set up a little small setup. Like the same setup everybody be on Instagram I'm talking about, are you in your home studio? I made most of my big records out of those kind of setups. When people laugh at that, I'll be like, oh yeah, they ain't seen nothing. Didn't man. one of the records you did just win Hip Hop Song of the Year last year that I played keys on that this year? These walls could talk. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, did, did, you did the Rose House. Yeah, we did yeah, that yeah. in your garage. Yeah, yeah. But that, that's, that was a high end. Bar. Time. But it, it was in Porter Ranch. It was a big ass house. A studio built out garage. Studio studio. SSL Home Channels and Need 1073s. And, but it was out the house, though. PMTs, DX27s. DI 55i. ST20s. You know what I'm saying? Alkaline <laughs> Sunshine. You know what I mean? Y'all got a lot of editing, man. <laughs> Y'all got a lot of editing, nigga. Look, nigga, like, man, these motherfuckers. No, that was great. They're going to be looking up the things that we just said. Oh, yeah. Some of sure. yours, <laughs> yours were right. My, I made my shit up. They're going to be looking at my shit. Some secret shit. I've never heard of that. T, I got a question for you. The, the scenario you just pictured for us in Snoop Studio with all those people around, what is a young kid? What did you tell yourself in that environment? I mean, it must be hard to focus with everything that's going on. Uh -huh. High pressure. I mean, you, you got a bunch of... Because I've seen so many people before me come. Like, I can't get into the vibe. That ain't my vibe. Or I can't get in. And, like, they, their whole life could have been amazing. But because they was caught in the box of what their vibe was, at that age, though. Mm -hmm. We're talking about 18, 19. We're talking about fuck that until you get on. Until you can forge your own house and your own space do your own music act. So let's talk about that shit. Until that, sometimes you don't have the luxury to have your vibe. Sometimes you gotta suppress your shit, build your vibe in your head, knock out the job, and then the next go around, keep that conscious. And then when you could afford to have your vibe, then have your own vibe. At that time, for years, for most of my career, I could never have my vibe where I wanted to work. So I had to build it in my head. How do you, you know? build that vibe in your head? You read a lot of mixed magazines, and you try to see, uh, you read the magazines and you look at where Dr. Dre, look at him a little glimpse of him, he may be touching the board like that. You try to look, then you look at another magazine, the studios, and now it's YouTube. You can look at YouTube. Sometimes you can imagine yourself, close your eyes and just, and just try to just like take your, your mental, music is spiritual and mental. So take the flesh out and just go mentally somewhere else and create the record you want to create. Battle Cat taught me that. You know, he used to do beats. I'd be like, man, what, what? He was like, I was thinking about if maybe if uh, if Nas bought some chicken on Crenshaw and Slauson and hung out with James Brown, grandma, but then they all went to Paul McCartney house. That's what that would sound like. Battle Cat would say these things and I'd be like, but he would build these things and while he was doing it, he'd be like, see that low end? He'd be like, yeah, see that? That's like if James Jameson walked in with no shoes. So I learned even from him to just build a thing because I can't say, wait a minute, this ain't my vibe. I can't create my shit. And miss that bread at that time when I had no place to live. But I'm at Snoop's doing beats. I'm say, where's the vibe? No, I'm just going to clobber the situation the best way I can, you know? When I really got close to Snoop, right before I got close to him, I was spending months and months in Goldie Lokes garage on the east side of Long Beach. A very high gang area. People have gotten shot in his garage. And I, did, I knew all the stories. I knew all the stories, but I didn't care because I wanted the music. And I wanted to understand what was this East Side Long Beach thing? How was it moving like? What was the cripping like? What was everything like? I didn't understand it. So I wanted to live in the heart of it so I could understand it. And when I'm with Goldie Loke and he's doing beats and Bulky, Bulky Loke from Compton, these are, these are classic West Coast names. Bulky Loke from Compton and you got Trey D walking in and Daz coming in to this garage with one speaker and the NPC and the VSA 80 with Goldie Logue doing all the beats. But these beats are all behind the beat. Hey, everybody listened to Jay Dilla at the time. All these things going on, but, but think about the environment. These are all gang bangers. Like you said, though, these are, what we was doing was all that. But these songs end up being played worldwide in clubs. You know what I'm saying? So I'm sure the cast would much rather at that time be in a big studio but they all had the imagination to be somewhere else when it wasn't even really there. So I think that's a big thing too. You have to, you have to learn. You have to learn to where Robert Glasper has the luxury of being able to have the vibe. Cause he's worked so fucking hard to gain that luxury to have the vibe. 
But I remember when he first got to New York, and even when I first started, we couldn't have, we had to go everybody else vibe. Yep. We had to be side men before we became leaders. We had to play, we had to play all your parts right to finally play our parts. Mm -hmm. You know? And people that don't understand that haven't been through that touring circuit of being a side man or being and wanting to be a side man young, if you haven't had that thing of wanting to make somebody else sound great, you got some other shit, then you ain't ready to go to the next step. You know? But the vibe, the vibe is a luxury. The vibe is something you earn. Robert, do you remember some of those early times where you had to take yourself to a certain That's moment? my opinion, by the way. That's just my opinion. <laughs> That's just my opinion, by the way. <laughs> Hell yeah. I was in the room with G-Unit and 50 Cent in the time where there was studio beef, where they had beef <laughs> and there was already a sh one shooting, you know, so <laughs> I had to go in there and lay some keyboard parts with some stuff. I'm, I don't think I've ever laid keyboard parts as fast as I did that night. So that wasn't the vibe, but that was the vibe, right? That was the vibe. And all these dudes standing around, you know, and blah, blah, blah. Dudes with guns, like the whole thing, like just in case something pop off. And I was like, damn, but I like, I need the money. <laughs> so I was like, okay, this is a little dangerous. I'm gonna go play these four songs real quick. I think I, I was there about 17 minutes. I played them four songs, I was out. <laughs> like, yeah. Bloom, 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 next song. <laughs> bloom, 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 next song, you know. So, oh uh, yeah, but I like, I didn't have a choice, you know. But like I said, somebody else's stuff, I need the money. And I want, I want it to sound good. So, you know, I did my yeah. thing, you know, whatever. But that's just real talk, you know. And now, yeah, I have the luxury of be hanging out. You know, he, he, we're in studio, studio, big studios that cost a lot of money for days at a time, weeks, weeks, <laughs> chilling. Two studios, like you got two. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm camping out in one of his studios doing some stuff, and he's like, "You can have my other studio. I'll be in the big one for a few days." I'm like, "Thanks, T." You know, but, it's, it's, but that's where we are now. He I can mean, do man. that, you know. And it, it's it's a little. It's and a every now and then, you know, you. you, you Remember that one session I just wanted to go to in Inglewood I took you to? Yes. Every now and then, because I came up like that, I'll go, I'll go <laughs> to some uncomfortable shit on yeah, purpose. You know it was uncomfortable because he had to give me a prep talk before we got in. <laughs> he was like, okay, listen. So and so and so and so is going to be in here. Could be a little dangerous. Just watch your back. I'm going to make this beat real quick. We're going to be cool. Because <laughs> that's how I grew up. And sometimes you need you need that edge, you know what I'm saying? He's like, like, hold this, this is the trigger. No, I'm trying. <laughs> Put this sometimes on. Sometimes you you know you need that edge, you know. Strap this vest on. Sometimes when it gets too comfortable, it gets stale, right? You gotta shit get weak. Shit get weak when you get too comfortable in life. Unfortunately, shit get weak. L life without struggle is strange. Mm -hmm. That's strange shit, you know. What what I mean, whatever your struggle is, you know. Thank God you can feel it. Yeah, Frederick yeah. Douglass said, without struggle, there's no progress. Come on now. Without jelly, I'm not eating toast. That was the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> without jelly, I'm not eating toast. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the most serious thing? Y'all can do the bloopers, man. Y'all can do the bloopers. Yeah, right. <laughs> The whole interview is just gonna be all freestyle. <laughs> oh man, no, you keep this shit like it is. That's what. That's how it goes viral. It's the uncut shit.